Hey, Wizard. So just a really quick upgrade that was pushed out last night, but the video is obviously only coming out now today, where with the Engel Granger co-integration test, you now have orange as well as green flags. And this video is going to explain exactly what that means. So of course, co-integration, meaning that there's some zigzaggy up and down going on or stationarity going on for the spread of a pair. That's what this here is saying. If you have a look at an orange flag, you might see something that looks more like this. And these are very good examples. I've cherry picked two examples here that really highlight the difference between green and orange. Some of them won't be as clear cut and you can't always trust your eyes. But nonetheless, if I select this orange one here, you'll notice there's this trend here on the spread. But the zigzagging happens on the way up on that trend. What this is saying is that this pair is co-integrated when we model in a trend as well. So it's like it's stationary around a trend. So the whole thing overall, if I was to look at this, this is not stationary, really. <laughs> it's only stationary when I take into account that trend. In other words, this is a trending time series. And you might say, well, that's useless because for pairs trading, I want to buy here, sell here, buy here, sell here. I want something that looks like this. I want to buy here, sell here, buy here, sell here, buy here, sell here. That's what I want. Why on earth would I want something like this? Well, you might want it if you're doing a rolling z-score strategy or you don't mind adjusting your base during trade. So for example, if you knew this thing was just going to zigzag up and down and that's how it's <laughs> it continually behaves, you might want to set a buy over here and then a sell over there. You might want to do that. But more realistically, a rolling z-score could still be useful for you in this case. And in fact, funnily enough, here trading just the static spread alone here actually yielded a huge return, which it wasn't supposed to, right? It's gone from negative two. Obviously, the entry would have been here. In fact, we can drop this over to the back test. The entry would have been here. You're in like a tiny amount of negative equity and then boom, you know, you've sold up here. And so your, <laughs> your strategies made a lot of money. If you want to see the actual buy and sells, if you go to the detail tab here, for example, um, you could do that just by switching this to being the entries. And then you can see here it went long and here it closed that position when it reverted here back to zero. So that's what that orange flag there is telling you. Now, here's an example that has a green flag. Well, this snapshot was actually taken before the update happened to the algorithm last night. So this is taken just at the start of yesterday and the upgrade actually happened after that. If I go and refresh this right now to pull the latest, you'll see it switches from green to orange. So something you can always do as well, remember, you can go here to your preferences and you can set it so that it automatically refreshes the latest data every time you click on something. So for example, here I might click on this one or this one. That issue is going to unwind within a couple of days, by the way. You won't have that issue anymore. It's just, <laughs> I had to make a decision. Do we want this extra piece of information in? And the answer was yes, we, we want to know if this includes a trend. Because if you're just doing a typical spread-based trading strategy, you might not want a trend in your data. In fact, very often you won't. And so here you can filter on Engel Granger excluding a trend. You should just get these green guys over here. This one, look at this. Wow, what is that? Oh, yeah, nice. Okay, so you know you should more or less just get these ones here. If I look at this one here, again, this was before the update last night, so this might still be orange. But again, that issue is going to unwind within a couple of days. So that is this change, what it means. It will tell you whether a spread is trending or not, and you can't always trust your eyes. So for example, if I go back here and I pick on some of the orange ones here, you might say, well, actually, I don't see that as trending. That looks you know, like it's oscillating here, but really is it? Because maybe there is a trend going on and the algorithm can actually calculate that for you. Can't always trust your eyes. That said, this is still not a spread I would really want to trade unless I'm doing something like a rolling z-score. And even the rolling z-score, if we have a look at the results here, actually, yeah, that did yield a positive result, 21.3%. So you still would have got a positive return based on the back test doing the rolling z-score. But if I look at the spread, the static spread, yeah, you get some ridiculously high number. But that's just because if I show you the back test, you can see the entry was here and the exit was there. Um, it assumes you got in here 
just after the start of this time series there. So, you know, that can be somewhat misleading. Just use some common sense when analyzing this. Filtering on these excluding a trend can be helpful because if you're just trading, for example, just the spread, or even if you're trading the rolling Z-score and you want both in your favor, then filtering out the ones that are co-integrated, including a trend, uh, can be very, very helpful for you.